Updates from the siege on Gaza, where the Israeli military launched a massive assault against civilians in Rafah, Gaza, last night. Rafah was supposedly a safe location where Palestinian refugees had congregated, had been told to congregate over the course of the last four months. As Congressman Jamal Bowman put it, while we watched the Super Bowl, Netanyahu launched a wave of attacks and killed innocent civilians in Rafah, a place where many refugees fled for relative safety, despite warnings from Biden. Netanyahu's government is unfit to lead anything and cannot receive support. This comes as a horrifying story about a six-year-old Palestinian girl named Hind, who was killed by the IDF, is circulating this tragedy. Started back on January 29th, when Hind and her uncle, aunt, and cousins attempted to flee Gaza City as it was under bombardment by Israel. The car came under fire, and survivors reached out in a now infamous call to the Palestinian Red Cross. As the Red Cross attempted to conduct a rescue, they say their ambulance was del deliberately targeted, killing two rescuers. Now, 12 days after her family's attempted evacuation, Hind was found killed, her body still lying in the car from which she made a desperate plea for help while trapped under Israeli fire. Just meters away from the battered and bullet-ridden vehicle, first responders and members of Hind's own family also found a burned-out ambulance with the remains of the two first responders who tried to save her from the Palestinian Red Crescent. This is what the Palestinian Red Crescent Society told NBC News. The negative press for Israel comes as the country claims it found a Hamas data center under UNRWA's Gaza headquarters. The Times of Israel reported that IDF forces found this data center. It was powered by an electrical room, industrial battery power, banks, and with living, living quarters for Hamas operatives operating the computer servers. It was built precisely under the headquarters. UNRWA's Commissioner General Philippe Lazzarini denied allegations that there was a Hamas data center under the building. Meanwhile, Israel appears to be losing international allies. Japan's Nippon aircraft supply has also ended ties with Israeli defense company Elbit Systems. Uh, so increasingly, you're seeing, uh, in, in, from an international trade perspective, people willing to withdraw their relationships with Israel over the expanding crisis. It's pretty remarkable. I, I don't know. It's, it's increasingly difficult to cover because, frankly, the volume of news coming out of Gaza is so much that it's difficult to know where to start. You have these discrete stories about human tragedy. I think the little girl, Hine, came into sharp focus in part because the distress call that she made from the vehicle was so visceral and went so viral because it was so human. And it helped, I think, cut through the massive scale of the tragedy that's unfolding. At the same time, those individual stories are just repeated over and over and over again. Um, as this population of 2.3 million people now has, you know, one out of 100 people killed and no clear end to the end of the crisis. Obviously, as we covered last week, Netanyahu rejected a, um, a deal which would have had all of the hostages uh, released in exchange for a ceasefire, but they do not want a ceasefire. They're saying that they're going to keep fighting until Hamas has been eliminated, a goal which right. experts across the political spectrum, whether they are kind of a Zionist or pro-Palestinian has said is very unlikely or impossible to achieve. So here we are. Here we are. Um, does this reporting about the um, the the data center under UNRWA's headquarters? Um, how are you processing that? Does well, that change your opinion about cutting off funding? No, actually, because that reporting is unraveling as we speak. So um, oh, really? Mehdi Hassan and Ryan Grimm were covering this a little bit this morning. Um, but this is, seems to be, appears to be a part of a pattern that we see. We saw it when we talked about the hospital bombings months ago. There was breathless accounts of how Israel would never and could never bomb a hospital. And we got the tapes that were supposed to confirm that the hospital could not have been bombed by Israel because there was this recording that Arab, uh, uh, Arabic speakers said does, does not sound like it's Palestinian voices, et cetera, but that was supposed to confirm that uh, it was a terrorist group that had conducted the bombing. And regardless of what you think about what happened in that instance, we've now, three months into it, seen, seen every hospital in northern Gaza bombed by Israel unequivocally. We've seen every university in Gaza bombed and destroyed by Israel. We've seen at least 16, um, uh, what do you call them, uh, cemeteries desecrated by Gaza. And we saw the story about how there was supposed to be this big command center under Al-Shifa Hospital completely crumble after we were given 
CGI images of what the bunkers were supposed to look like, and all of this information in the lead up to the attack on that hospital, come to find out that none of that was there. We covered the story about how there were the three guns leaned up against the MRI machine, and that was supposed to be the the headquarters of Hamas. Now, similarly, reporting seems to be trickling out that these claims that the this data center that justified the siege on, on Rafa also is unsubstantiated as well. So, no, it doesn't change very much. At the oh. end of the day, Israel is responsible, as our own president said. Joe Biden hasn't been very good on this, but rhetorically he did say that they should not have a siege on Rafa where all of these civilians were told to go unless there was an evacuation plan or some kind of plan that could ensure the humanitarian needs of this population were taken care of. Well, I'm just all I can go off of is reporting from the Wall Street Journal that says it is a Hamas data center, that it has been under the headquarters for years, that part of the parking lot there collapsed in 2014 because of what was underneath it, that everyone there, a former UNRWA official said, everyone knew about that, and it was used to steal supplies from UNRWA for Hamas. So that's well, let me ask the you claims this. of the Wall Street Journal. Um, hundreds of people were killed last night, including dozens of children. I mentioned before, I don't know if we're able to show it or willing to show it, but there's a very viral image going around of a girl hanging from the side of a wall with both of her legs ripped off, and it is what it sounds like. Is that justified? Like, at what point, how many civilian deaths, how many child deaths? Um, there was new reporting um, with a new updated number of child deaths, almost half of the population that's been killed out of the 27,000 or so, I think it's like 11 or 12,000 now, or children specifically. I mean, are we I mean, really saying, is the argument really that if there's Hamas under the ground, which there's Hamas all over the, under the ground in Gaza, because that's the nature of what it means, right. that's the nature of Hamas, that's the nature of Gaza, when you don't have a country with a military where you can have your own bases, the and the, you're under surveillance from a neighboring country, you have to go underground. So is the, so are we just openly saying you're allowed to kill every child, every civilian in Gaza if it means getting Hamas? I mean, it's warfare. They're at war with Hamas, and they're committed to its utter destruction, and they could end the violence and the killing of kids any day by giving up the fight against this insurmountable enemy. If you're, now, if your question is, should we support and fund it, my answer is no. I agree well, with you on the underlying— we are supporting and funding Okay, but I agree it. with you on the underlying funding issue, not because I particularly want to hold Israel accountable, but because I don't think the U.S. should be paying for the defense of other countries, particularly one that is perfectly able to afford its own, its, its, uh, its, its own weapons. Well, so I would—I yeah. agree with you on that, but I, we just—we don't agree on the fundamental regardless nature Regardless if you want to hold Israel accountable, there are—there is something called international law, and there are accountability. Yeah, mechanisms, I don't care about that either. which are in fact in place, and the United States seem to care a great deal because they are really shying away from and castigating anybody who implies that there is in fact a genocide happening before our eyes. I mean, a lot of folks, even anti-interventionists, RFK Jr. has said this, will say things like, "Well, I'm an anti-interventionist, but I would have intervened in World War II." Some understanding that there is a kind of a gravity of a humanitarian crisis, millions of Jewish people packed into concentration camps and death camps, but that know, would justify some kind of international intervention, even if it's a political intervention, like the one that is in the works at the ICJ. But, that, I, I, but wait a minute. Okay. If that's the case, it seems bizarre to see statements of intent that are, frankly, rather unprecedented. Normally, that's the hardest part of a genocide case to prove. But in this moment, we have dozens and dozens of statements from senior members of the Israeli government, including Netanyahu, that are clear statements of genocidal intent. And we see actions. We see the destruction of a community. We see the destruction of civil buildings. We see the destruction of education buildings. We see cemeteries that are dug up. We've seen damage to Jewish cemeteries, which Palestinians have been faithfully guarding and protecting for generations that have now been killed by the IDF. We see the IDF shooting their own prisoners every, every, in the head. Every Everything you're describing takes place uh, hostages, in, rather. in warfare and took place in our, it, we did that to Germany and to Japan as part of our effort against them. And tons of innocent civilians died, tons of it. But we 
said that was necessary to defeat this evil force That's not what we that said, had attacked Robbie. us. After that happened, we would have destroyed we, every minute, city of Japan, Japan until happened. they surrendered. After that happened, we established these international rules because we were so horrified and disgusted by the but conduct if the that happened rules during just World War constrain II. Constrain us or a state from killing evil terrorist regimes, then they're, what good are they? That's the opposite of what these international followed. rules do. What these international rules, in effect, are doing are offering immunity to us and to our allies like Israel while condemning everybody else in the world when they do the, those kinds of things. This is an opportunity to actually have equity with those international rules and hold Israel and the United States account for genocides the same way that we are so quick to cast judgment, rightly so, on people in other parts of the world when they treat their populations horribly. So regardless of what you think, I understand, Robbie, you're a human being that exists in the world and you're allowed, entitled to your perspectives. But frankly, I think it derails the conversation when we're not talking about whether or not the ICJ, which exists and which is a, a part of a body of international law and, and treaties that we subscribe to and that we are signatories to as in the United States of America, and which Israel is a signatory to, a signatory of the Genocide Convention. They have an obligation under the law not to be killing civilians the way that they're doing. And so the question is whether or not those organizations are going to hold them accountable and whether or not the United States is going no. to follow its own law, like the lay, the lay, lay law, which precludes us from giving money to Our obligation to is the defense company, of— um, Countries that are committing war crimes. The U.S. government's obligation is to the defense of its citizenry. I'm, that's true for Israel as well. And we're not going to— international law ourselves into being able to stop terrorist groups that have attacked us. Wait, what? Exactly what I just said. Okay. Inter if international law only constrains state actors from defeating terrorist groups when they're attacked, what good is international law? What are you law? talking about? What, why, why are you just saying I'm that saying that's what international law I'm saying does. we shouldn't. I'm saying this is why we're ignoring it. No. It's not why we're ignoring it. We're ignoring it because, as our politicians have said repeatedly, they see Israel as a strategic advantage for us in the Middle East, and so we're willing to look the other way as they massacre tens of thousands of civilians with our tax dollars and with our bombs. All right, more rising right after this.